Hey guys, Skyler here. So I see you're back in my kitchen yet again because I have no real ideas of what to do for videos. So welcome to my kitchen for like time number 9,000. Um, I am making a, another cake. Well, it's gonna be an oil based cake this time. As you can see, I have pre-measured all my ingredients because I have a horrible time management still as evidenced by the fact that my last few baking videos have increased in time each time I've posted them. Even now, each time I said, I'm gonna be quicker. So what I'm making is an oil-based yellow cake recipe for the, the base structure of the cake, and then the actual inside be filled with a chocolate chip cookie dough buttercream. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for the outside yet, so we're gonna kinda go along with that one as we do it. Um, but basically, I'm in a little cooking competition with someone at work, and uh, I need to upstage their delicious sugar cookie bears covered in vanilla infused sugar and little hearts cut out that were all individually bagged and made pretty on a tray. And she somehow did this overnight. So we're gonna upstage her with a cookie dough cake. Let's get started. So, the first thing we're starting with is two egg whites. And as you've probably noticed, I finally have some glass holes so you can see what I'm actually doing. Um, so we're gonna start with our egg whites. So we need to get these nice and stiff. Make sure any bowl you are using does not have any grease whatsoever. Otherwise they will not whip. And you do want them to be room temp because they'll actually get more volume that way. In my case, I am gonna use a hand mixer. And hopefully this does not... Yep, we're already tangled. I am doing great. There we go. I have so many surge protectors and extension cords below me, it's ridiculous. Did I already put... I did? I did put it in the sink. Okay. Well, hold on a second. That's a third cup. Where is my half cup? Oh, right here. Never mind. So, with the egg whites, we are going to put a half cup of sugar in. But we're going to kind of stream it in slowly until it's all combined. I think it says what it say to do. Because I'm using a recipe from Food52, so I'll put that in the description box down below for you guys. So, I never made this. So it's going to be a learning experience. So I have the recipe literally off to the side here. So we're going to go ahead and we preheat our oven 350. I already got that going. We're going to use, is this use 9 inch tins? I only have 8 inch cake tins, but they're deep tins, so that should help. Plus I need to make layers anyway, so I'm okay if it's a little thicker. You just might have to cook it a little longer. Um, so... Yeah, so we have to do this a tablespoon at a time, so we're just going to be really careful, but we're going to froth up, froth up, froth up our eggs first a little bit here. So, started. Hold on. Let me turn on the cord. I'm doing so good. <laughs> Alright. I have not used the glass bowl in a long time, so, yay. the eggs basically they're gonna get really bubbly and it's gonna start getting white and that's when you can start worrying about your sugar all right so let's just do a tablespoon at a time until they're stiff peaks all right so I'm just gonna stream this in basically uh, this is where having a stand mixer be really helpful but I don't feel like using a stand mixer so we're gonna work with what we got all right That's that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna just stop right there because I don't want to over whip these because you can over whip eggs and they just break because it's a meringue. So if you break your meringue, you're you're done. So I'm going to just kind of clean off this here. Make sure you save as much as possible. Although, it doesn't always want to come out, obviously. That's good enough. 
and going for a masterpiece here. We're going to work with what we got. Just want to make sure I get up as much as I can. There we go. I'm always worried that either I under whip them or over whip them. I think these are pretty pretty close. I don't want to go any further because I'm worried I am going to over whip them. So here's me hoping because usually eggs whip or egg whites whip really quickly when you um have room temp. But these just didn't want to whip. All right, just gonna all right, move these two aside because I don't want to deflate them. So I'm gonna put them all back here. The next part is to combine our dry stuff. So we got our two and one four cups of cake flour, or it's supposed to be, in my case, I only had all purpose uh, and a little bit of cake flour. So I had to do a lot of fun math. So I'm gonna advise you to either use all all purpose or all cake flour, probably the cake flour, cause it's just better. Um, and then I'm gonna use a cup of sugar and I believe we add in our other stuff too, correct? Yes. So we're also adding in three teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and then my optional, which is a half teaspoon of cinnamon. It's just a personal thing. I love having that stuff in there. So we're gonna add it. And then I'm just gonna give these guys a quick whisk to make sure you know, everything's pretty well combined because this is an oil mixture. And because you're not creaming your butters and your sugars, you kind of just throw it all into one bowl. So you want to make sure you have a pretty good sized bowl for this. Because this is going to be a pretty good size. So I hope this is big enough, because this is the largest bowl out of the set. So here's me hoping. Alright. So next, it does want you to use a uh, hand mixer or a stand mixer and I just put the I just put it away I did just put that away huh okay where you are doing this as an oil mixture you're not creaming anything you can definitely do this by hand but it is gonna be harder as the recipe quite literally says they prefer to use a hand mixer um, so I'm just gonna follow the recipe use a hand mixer if it's telling me to that part. Oh, there's sugar right there. What's not? There's sugar everywhere because I was stupid and I got sugar in the beater blade. Or rather, sprayed out by the beater blade. So let's just do a quick little cleanup. Yeah, let's just like disperse the sugar off of what's here. Okay. Live and learn. Alright, so Okay, so I got that all combined, and then I want you to put all of the wet in at the same time. Okay. So for our fat, we have a half cup of oil plus one tablespoon. I'm using canola because it's flavorless. Just what you want. You don't really want any flavored oil. If you do, I guess go for it. Alright, so that's that part. I have one cup of milk, which is room temp. You don't want to have different temperatures in here. We have three egg yolks, which is left over from the whites, which is why I love doing a yellow cake versus a white cake, so you do use those egg yolks. Although, nothing wrong with saving them for something else. And then we have a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. I love these little prep bowls. Love them so much. There was a difference that I wanted that had more bowls, but it had terrible reviews of the largest bowls like this, just, just randomly shattering, which isn't too, like, um, favorable. Alright, so it says to give this a really good beat for two minutes, and then we're gonna add in our egg mixture, or rather our egg whites, which will help with the volume. And it does say to be careful because this is gonna get thick because it doesn't have that bit of moisture from the eggs. I'm gonna do this real quick here, because it's getting... I know, it's not how you use a hand mixer, but it was spraying at me, so I'm gonna do a quick little mix by hand. There we go. 
So the recipe doesn't say to do this, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this to kind of start it off. So I don't deflate the whole thing. So, so kind of kind of loosen it up, so to speak. I know I don't fold correctly. Just, just do as the recipe says, not as I do. Was it do as I say, not as I do? Is that the thing? Yeah, I think that does it. Tip out the egg in there now because the extra sugar, obviously. Okay. So it is a bit runny, but that's to be expected because it's an oil base. I'm just gonna put this to the side. And get our tins. So like I said, I only have eight inch cake tins. I do not have nine inch, partly because I don't ever make nine inch cakes. Um, but these are these are thicker, so what like two inches I think. Ooh, these are getting scratched. I mean, that's not so much on the outside. The inside I really care about, but those are being destroyed. Inside's perfect. These are the fat dalios. They just they just work really well, and I love them. Okay, I'm gonna take my rings off for this because I don't want to scratch the heck out of these pans, which is literally what will happen. So let's not do that. Okay, I need to. Is that just air bubble or is that big? All right, I need to cut for a second so I can. Really, is there still sugar? Oh my god, there's still sugar all over this. Go away, go away, sugar. Oh my god, like it doesn't want to go away. One day I will do a video where everything works. All right, I'm gonna cut real quick and just spray these up and flour them, and we'll get to dividing. So BRB. All right, so I'm back. Uh, normally I would grease flour, or grease parchment paper, and then grease and flour. I forgot to buy parchment paper, so we're gonna hope that grease and flour works. And we're just gonna try to evenly divide this the best we can. I'm gonna use actually something else, a little trick from Food52. We've heard Chef Aaron, she uses a, like a cookie scoop or an ice cream scoop and just puts even amounts in each one. So I figured I'd do that. You just wanna work quickly because the air in here you don't wanna you know, lose all that volume. This is a runnier batter, so obviously this is not gonna work exactly the same, but because she was doing it with a thick batter. But we, we work with what we got. Alright guys, so they got about about 12 scoops in each, so that's pretty good. Um, I'm gonna bang these just slightly to get some air holes to rise up. And I don't want holes in the cake. And this is to baking for 30 to 35 minutes. I might do a little longer just for a smaller pan. So I'm gonna start at 30 and work up, check them in like two minute intervals. And all you're looking for is that when you press in the middle lightly, it springs back and they're ready. I don't do the cake tester thing, I don't trust it, because usually by that point it's too late, so just do this thing. Bye! Alright guys, we're back. So my cakes have baked and cooled. They actually came out pretty level, surprisingly. I'm still gonna take off the top cart, cart? Top part, because it's, you know, the caramelized sugar, so I kind of get rid of the crust, just so it's the soft, fluffy part to it. Um, but first, while that kind of finishes cooling, I'm gonna go ahead and make the edible cookie dough for the actual frosting we're gonna make, or with buttercream. The first thing is, um, of course, I again pre-measured everything because it just makes life easy. Uh, you do want to heat treat your flour. You can either microwave it or bake it in an oven. You basically want to get to 165 um, to kill any bacteria that could be in there, which it's, you know, just like with meat, you need to make sure you get it to a certain temp for just safety. Um, you can do this by hand. I'm going to use a hand mixer because I'm lazy. And also this recipe we link down below because it is from Kawaii's Sweet World because I actually like her edible cookie dough compared to a lot of other ones and because it's like a basic dough. Okay, so I already took care of my flour, so we're going to go ahead and get the butter going. Um, in this case, we're going to mix our sugars in butter so it gets nice and combined. So you're not beating it until it's like fluffy because you're not baking this. So this is the times eight recipe. 
because this is basically for eight people, I think that should be enough for what I want. So we've got half a cup of butter, we got six tablespoons of sugar, light and uh, for sugar for brown sugar and regular sugar. So get those in there. So this is combined, so we're gonna add two tablespoons of milk, and then we're gonna throw in our vanilla. The one thing I didn't pre-measure because I didn't have enough bowls. So now you all know I drink Fairlife milk because lactose is not my friend lately. All right, put this aside. I'm gonna use this for the frosting in a little bit, and then we have. I think this is just a teaspoon of vanilla. What are we? We're a teaspoon of vanilla. Cool beans. Yes. All right, and then we're gonna get this mixed together. Next we have our heat treated flour, in this case this is a cup, I think, yeah it's a cup. And then I have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, I have a quarter teaspoon, yeah quarter teaspoon of salt, and then I have half a teaspoon of baking soda. Uh, she says that baking soda kind of helps with that flavor, because you have cooked flour in here and then you have raw ingredients, so it kind of apparently adds a little to it, so I'll go with it. Cinnamon, again, I'm putting chocolate in here, so I just want it to kind of help out. So I'm gonna get these guys mixed in here real good. So, I'll sit with you now. And then I'm gonna just plop you all in here. All right. And then I'm gonna give this a slight mix by hand. Just A, to clean the edges down, and B, so this doesn't blow up in my face. Because with this mixer, it's going to blow up in my face. I'm going to be really upset about it. So, I'm going to do this. I actually might not even need the mixer, to be honest. This might be okay on its own. Ugh. Okay, come on. I'm so glad I got these glass bowls. It's just so much more pleasant, because I get flour everywhere. <laughs> It's so much more pleasant to see everything a little better. Okay. So, let me go ahead. I'm just gonna... Boom. And get that on top. Put you over my chocolate chips for the moment. So, half a cup of mini chocolate chips. It might be a little less than half, but... I don't care. <laughs> this I will do by hand, because... I do not want to have mini chocolate chips go flying. And I also don't want to overmix this anyways. Not baking it, but I still don't want it to get like tough. Alright. That's pretty much that's yeah, that's pretty much it. You can use regular size chocolate chips. I would prefer to use mini because it's going into a frosting, so I don't want large chunks, you know, being bitten into inside the cake. And I'm just gonna do this to mm, A plus. Okay. Alright guys, I am back. So I did quite a lot off screen. I did my frosting coloring, I made my cookie dough frosting, um, layered my cakes. Unfortunately one layer did not survive. It is in the, the scrap bowl. It just didn't quite make it less delicious. And then I also made a Simple syrup, just because I want to make sure this stays moist. It's going to be sitting overnight. And simple syrup is literally just equal parts water and sugar, and you just bring it to a boil until the sugar is dissolved. So, super easy. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this kind of soaked in a little bit, and start kind of building everything. you stop at any point of doing this, it's going to make a mark and you're gonna be so mad. So, do your best to keep it kind of straight and go with it. 
I just realized these are gonna make it difficult. Fudge. No, well, we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Oop, yep. Probably should have used can see it from right there, but it's just a really pretty color. Alright, we're back for like the 80th time this episode. So, got the nice gradient going on, did exactly what I wanted, and now we're gonna add some edging touches. I got the rest of that buttercream in the bag, got some cookies to crumble on top, and I got some melted chocolate to have some fun with. So let's start with this part. I don't know how many I'm gonna get, so we're just gonna roll with it. At least I wanna get you here. It's all like, yeah, this is, yeah, that's good. This is starting to merge, so I think I'll just do. There is the one in between, because I don't I have that much left. That's all. Kind of pull it down. There. So, that's that. dishes to do. So little time. Okay, now this, which I was trying to cool this a little bit because I don't want it too hot. I don't want to melt your buttercream because this will melt. Okay, now I'm going to just get it in this pastry bag here, which I have not cut the tip off yet because I'm not doing a big one. Still warm, but not like so hot it's gonna destroy everything. That's it. No more 
any more fussing, I'm gonna be mad about it. So that is, that is it. It is done. I cut this open, but I do not want to test it until I get to work. But I know the actual cake is good, because I've eaten the scraps, it is delicious. But I hope you guys try this out, leave me some comments, and uh, I'm gonna go do all these dishes. Alright, see ya. <laughs>